Book Nine: The Confessions by Saint Augustine, translated by E. B. Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Marianne. Book Nine, Chapter Ten. The day now approaching whereon she was to depart this life, which day thou well knewest, we knew not. It came to pass, thyself, as I believe, by thy secret way so ordering it, that she and I stood alone, leaning on a certain window which looked into the garden of the house where we now lay at Ostia. Were removed from the din of men, we were recruiting from the fatigues of a long journey for the voyage. We were discoursing then together, alone, very sweetly, and forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, we were inquiring between ourselves in the presence of thy truth, which thou art, of what sort the eternal life of the saints was to be, which eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man. But yet we gasped with the mouth of our heart, after those heavenly streams of thy fountain, the fountain of life, which is with thee, that being bedewed thence, according to our captivity, we might in some sort meditate upon so high a mystery. And when our discourse was brought to that point, that very highest delight of the earthly senses, in the very purest material light, was, in respect of the sweetness of that life, not only worthy of comparison, but not even of mention, we raising up ourselves with a more glowing affection towards the self-same, did by degrees pass through all things bodily, even the very heaven, whence sun and moon and stars shine upon the earth. Yea, we were soaring higher yet, by inward musing and discourse and admiring of thy works. And we came to our own minds and went beyond them, that we might arrive at that region of never-failing plenty where thou feedest Israel for ever with the food of truth, and where life is the wisdom by whom all these things are made, and what have been, and what shall be, and she is not made, but is, as she hath been, and so shall she ever be. Yea, rather, to have been, and hereafter to be, are not in her, but only to be, seeing she is eternal. For to have been, and to be hereafter are not eternal. And while we were discoursing and panting after her, we slightly touched on her with the whole effect of our heart, and we sighed, and there we leave bound the first fruits of the Spirit, and returned to vocal expressions of our mouth, where the word spoken has beginning and end. And what is like unto thy word, O Lord, who endureth in himself without becoming old, and maketh all things new? We were saying then, if to any the tumult of the flesh were hushed, hushed the images of the earth and waters and air, hushed also the poles of heaven, yea, the very soul be hushed to herself, and by not thinking on self surmount self, hushed all dreams and imaginary revelations, every tongue and every sign, and whatsoever exists only in transition, since if any could hear, all these say, We made not ourselves, but he made us that abideth for ever. If, then, having uttered this, they too should be hushed, having roused only our ears to him who made them, and he alone speak, not by them, but by himself, that we may hear his word, not through any tongue of flesh, nor angel's voice, nor sound of thunder, nor in the dark riddle of a similitude, but might hear whom in these things we love, might hear his very self without these, as we too now strained ourselves, and in swift thought touched on that eternal wisdom which abideth over all. Could this be continued on, and other visions of kind far unlike be withdrawn, and this one ravish and absorb, and wrap up its beholder amid those inward joys, so that life might be for ever that one moment of understanding which now we sighed after? Were not this, enter into thy master's joy? And when shall that be? when we shall all rise again, though we shall not all be changed. Such things was I speaking, and even if not in this very manner and these same words, yet, Lord, thou knowest, that in that day when we were speaking of these things, and this world with all its delights became, as we spake, contemptible to us, my mother said, Son, for mine own part I have no further delight in anything in this life. What I do here any longer, and to what end I am here, I know not, now that my hopes in this world are accomplished. One thing there was, for which I desired to linger for a while in this life, that I might see thee a Catholic Christian before I died. My God hath done this for me more abundantly, 
that I should now see thee withal, despising earthly happiness, become his servant. What do I hear? End of Book 9, Chapter 10 Book 13 of The Confessions by St. Augustine, translated by E. B. Pusey. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Marianne. Book 13. Continuation of the Exposition of Genesis 1. It contains the mystery of the Trinity, and a type of the formation, extension, and support of the Church. Chapter 9. But was not either the Father or the Son born above the waters? If this means in space, like a body, then neither was the Holy Spirit. But if the unchangeable supereminence of divinity above all things changeable, then were both Father and Son and Holy Ghost born upon the waters. Why, then, is this said of thy spirit only? Why is it said only of him? And if he had been in place, who is not in place, of whom only it is written, that he is thy gift? In thy gift we rest, there we enjoy thee. Our rest is our place. Love lifts us up thither, and thy good spirit lifts up our lowliness from the gates of death. In thy good pleasure is our peace. The body by its own weight strives towards its own place. Weight makes not downward only, but to his own place. Fire tends upward, a stone downward. They are urged by their own weight, they seek their own places. Oil poured below water is raised above the water. Water poured upon oil sinks below the oil. They are urged by their own weights to seek their own places. When out of their order, they are restless. Restored to order, they are at rest. My weight is my love. Thereby am I born, whithersoever I am born. We are inflamed, by thy gift we are kindled, and are carried upwards. We grow inwardly and go forwards. We ascend thy ways that be in our heart, and sing a song of degrees. We grow inwardly with thy fire, with thy good fire, and we go, because we go upwards to the place of Jerusalem. For gladdening was I in those who said unto me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. There hath thy good pleasure placed us, that we may desire nothing else but to abide there for ever. 